Let's go to Roxy in Lafayette. Hey, Roxy, you're on with Weather and Larry Kruger. What's going on? Hi, thank you for taking my call. Yeah, um, thanks for I making it. Calling, I was just calling to say, um, you know, for me, from my perspective, I will um, cheer for Jordan Poole because, you know, he helped us to get a championship. And I like what Larry said, you know, don't obligate people to do what they want, but I would definitely would love to know for the people that are going to boo him. I would like to know why they're going to boo him. You and, know what? Yeah, Roxy, I don't think anyone is. You know what I mean? Like, oh, come I, on, there there is guaranteed going to okay. be somebody. If there if, are people that will boo just because he's wearing a wizard's jersey. If you're going to the game tonight and you're planning to boo pool. 888-957-9570. We want to talk to you right now. <laughs> Get okay? in here. Yeah. Be accounted they're, for. They're not saying pool. They're saying boo. boo. Yeah. If you're going to, but, but Roxy, my bet is, and what I'm trying to say, I just think there's different levels of cheering. I, 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 I'm I not going to do like, let's do prolonged standing ovation. I was there for Durant's video earlier this year. And it really, yeah, I wasn't any booing, but it's not like everybody was like, stop what you're doing. Put your popcorn down. Let's stand up and have a prolonged Kevin Durant respect hour. That didn't happen. It was just kind of like, hey, all right. And it's been like four years. He voluntarily left. Yeah, and it's been a while. Like, it's kind of like run its course. This has still got emotion around it. But, um, yeah. I, Roxy, we'll see. We'll see. I'm with you. You cheer pool. I'm just not going to, like, I'm not jumping out of my chair. You won't fist pump or anything? You won't. <laughs> Thanks, Roxy. I'm not. Jordan! Yeah, I'm not. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. <laughs> I hope the camera finds finds Willard That'd be tonight. awesome. And you're just going crazy. Yeah. Pool party! Yeah, I love you, man! You got a full-on pool mask oh, on. You, you got a wizard's jersey. <laughs> you, got yeah. a, you, you You drew on a mustache like him. People are going, hey, respect to pool. And that's exactly the word that I will use. I will be very respectful. But I'm not going to lose my mind. I'm not going to act like... Like, let me give a comp of... Uh, let's see. Somebody coming back... Um, oh, I got one. All right. The Blue Jays didn't play here last year. But if they had, and Brandon Belt came to the plate at Oracle Park. Very polarizing player for God only knows why. Right. But that's someone who I'd be like, okay, get get out of your chair. It's Brandon freaking Belt. Like, that's that's championships. That's many, many years in this uniform. That's all of it. And, he, and he's not, like, a superstar. But, but he didn't, like, get into a big high-profile brawl with no, Brandon Crawford either. No, but he wore a captain's hat, and people thought he was weird. He got all, like, dry sense of humor guy at the end. But he's a funny guy. Yeah, but that's my point. He's likable. That's somebody who I would be like, get out of my seat like Brandon Belt is back. Next year, what if Brandon Crawford comes back for a game? What are you going to do? Cheer him. This, Absolutely. He's, this, he's a Bay Area son. This is not that this is not those guys. This is someone who was here for three and a half years and won a championship and also got into all kinds of stuff and uh, drove people nuts at times, did a lot of good and and did a lot that was questionable. So that's how I that's how I'll act. I mean, it's just it 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 to me, I once again. I, I wouldn't judge anybody. Do what you got to do. Do what you got to do. And if you feel if you feel the urge to to cheer him, cheer him. If you if you don't appreciate something about his tenure here, and you feel like you want to boo him, then boo him. You're paying big big bucks for tickets. I'm not going to tell you how to think. I'm not going to tell you what to do. How, how you feel is how you feel. Mm-hmm. Exactly right, but he's it's a it's a complicated um, tenure. Let's just say that. I mean, I'm going back to the Warriors title team from the first time they won um, under Kerr, and I'm looking at the list of guys, and there's not one guy on this list that you would even think about not cheering because they're all just kind of either great guys or you know you get nothing but pretty bunch positive thoughts. 
But Poole's thing is a little bit more complicated than that. No doubt. So. No doubt. Um, how about uh, Doug and Berkeley? Hey, Doug, thanks for calling. What's up? Hey, guys. Good afternoon. Happy holidays. You too. Um, too you as well. I got to start my remarks by saying I was one of those people that was screaming at the TV, you know, when Jordan Poole was hoisting up those shots and just, you know, kind of, you know, he's exasperating. Um, but that being said, I, I think, at least, I think the reason that we're so, you know, uh, polarized and, 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 you know, feel somewhat negative is that when he first came up, he was like he was last year. And then he went down in the G League and he worked on his game and he came back up and all the commercials and everything I was seeing was talking about how great Jordan Poole was now and how he progressed and how he worked on his game and he delivered in the playoffs. And I think that we all felt like, okay, this guy has made the step. And he 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 made the step, but then he didn't live up to it. He didn't continue to progress in a straight line last year. Um, now, remember, he came off the bench. He was leading the backup unit. Sometimes he was starting. He was, doing, was called upon to do a whole bunch of stuff, and he still averaged 20 points a game. So, so I think he didn't live up to the expectations that he created for us by going down, working on his game, and coming up and helping us win a championship. And that's why we're so frustrated, in part. Um, uh, that, I, I'd be interested in, in what you guys well, have to say about that. You know, Thanks, Doug. It's, it's funny listening to uh, to him kind of lay that out. You know, there's there's things that happen in a career. Well, how about a guy like Jordan Bell? Okay. What if all of a sudden they showed Jordan Bell? <laughs> Jordan Bell had a ton of talent. I figured I'd just laugh. <laughs> Hey, that's right. <laughs> With the uh, Hennessy, Jordan Bell. I mean, I think of him in the, drinking the Hennessy in the in the parade. Uh, yeah, he's kind of a clown. Well, I kind of like the guy, but you know, di- didn't he order a bunch of food on Mike yes. Brown's? Uh, I mean, he kind of <laughs> just weird. You know, I give him a standing ovation. Uh, yeah, Jordan. <laughs> I mean, Jordan just makes that makes me laugh. Room service. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Everybody gets their own set of emotions. Jordan Bell would probably <laughs> make me laugh. You know, the year after Steph retires, that would probably make me cry. Others would make me just be like, I am so inspired that I want to stand up and cheer and really make a moment out of this. Jordan is multi-tiered in what terms if, of his what emotions. If, what, if the, what if tonight you see sitting courtside Jordan, Pell, Jordan Bell and Swaggy P? <laughs> I would laugh even harder. <laughs> He got swaggy. Swaggy. He got swaggy and Jordan Bell. Two guys that, you know, were on you know on a on a team. They're like Shaq and a fool Hall of Famers. <laughs> like I would just laugh. I would laugh. Yeah, there's nothing really to boo, but I mean no. unless you're Mike Brown, maybe Mike Brown would boo Jordan Bell. I don't Bell. know. How many like okay, let's talk about booing for a I second. Don't boo a lot of yeah, people, FP period. was in here yesterday. He's like, this town doesn't boo. It doesn't boo the home players. They booed Jeff Kent. Yeah. Badly. Yeah. But he had just gone on the radio saying, you people are so stupid. Well, I'll tell you what. He it, said that. This does not get brought up a lot. I took it as a little bit of a slight to the organization. Jordan Poole earlier this year, and I don't have the direct quote in front of me, but Jordan Poole earlier this year essentially said everything that um, everything I needed to achieve in Golden State I did. And I didn't like that. I don't like that quote. Um, it's just a very, it's, once again, it, show, it reveals a mindset yep. of meism. Right. Right. And while I said a it, team sport, I said to you earlier, I get it. I do. It's understandable. I wouldn't, if I were a 23 year old athlete with 15 years in the league a, a, ahead of me and I saw myself a certain way, I would want to clear that path as well. So it's not like I, I hate him for it or something. But the problem for all of these guys, whether your name is Kevin Durant or Jordan Poole, you're joining something that's already established. And there are challenges associated with that, with being a 20-something point-per-game scorer, but joining something that's established because you're trying to carve your own role 
into something that's already spinning pretty fast. And we fans are like, we love what's already spinning really fast. We've been here the whole time. We love this. Don't come in here and upset our apple cart. And so there's conflict there. I understand both sides. I know which side I'd vote for. It's why I'm not a huge fan of Jordan Poole. Like, I'm going to side with Steph, Clay, and Dre. Sorry. (laughs) Don't come in here and make all of this about your future contracts. And he did at times. So while I understand it, I don't have to love it. And, uh, and I don't like that, that he arrived in Washington and, and made some of those comments. I thought that was very revealing. Yeah, I mean, to me, I don't, I don't get exercised about it because I just don't. But everybody's got a different way of looking at it. Like, I, I, like Brett Butler was a great giant. They won the National League pennant with Brett Butler leading off in center field. We're going way back now. Um, He voluntarily left for the Dodgers. Mm -hmm. And And when he came back, it was like... what? You don't... Do you remember? Got really gray? I don't know. I don't know. I, I was at the game in the bleachers at Candlestick in left field when... That that gets a whoop! Yeah. Absolutely. Because you were in the bleachers? I was there, Larry. Oh, okay. I was there. Okay. I thought, it, I thought there had to be a famous a, person. A grizzled sign. veteran of this city. I thought you, you know, I ran into Jordan, you know, Brett Butler. Stop whooping me. That guy, <laughs> you know how on opening day they announce the whole rosters and everybody comes out on the lines. Right, right. Okay. Um, the pomp and circumstance of opening day. So Brett Butler is leading off. And when Brett Butler gets announced... He gets booed because you voluntarily left right. and, and joined the Dodgers. Now that's kind of why I think KD. That's part it's of the, the KD that's Part of the deal. Does that mean that we hate Brett? No, it doesn't. But then, as he arrived, just just to the third base side of home plate, as the leadoff hitter for the other team would do, he gave a big, long, sarcastic hug to Tommy Lasorda. As he was getting booed. And that may seem like nothing. That may seem like, well, hey, you're booing him, so he's going to play to the crowd. But He really did. He he did. He gave a big hug to Tommy Lasorda. And it was almost like, hey, they're booing me. And he's like, to me, what that said, if I could put a caption under it, I'm a Dodger now. And I said, well, then... There was an awful lot of hugging then, in the sort of dugout, then, by the way. Yes, you are, and I will treat you as such. Boo. By the way, you mentioned <laughs> FP. Didn't didn't FP go from the Giants to the Dodgers, too? Sure did. Sure did. A little different. A little different. Look, when guys are just trying to, <laughs> trying to get a gig, right, right. you go where you go. Right. Plus, that was a much— And nobody u- held it against him. And no. He's, and he's a NorCal son. Sergio, Sergio Romo put on a Dodger uniform. Right. Nobody's Be wheezy. mad. Yeah. I mean, come on. You get a gig where you can get a gig. Right, right. But when you're at the top of the free agent market, and you, you start coming out other. and rubbing up against Lasorto in the middle of a boo fest, like, get out of here, dude. Yeah. You don't need that. Yeah, because you, the fans feel maybe a little betrayed. Like, hey, man, you chose them over us. Mm-hmm. You didn't want to be here. You're not one of us. Uh, one of my favorite moments at Candlestick, similar to a guy who's already come up on this conversation, too. Um, I'll never forget when Dion. And remind me, if I'm getting this right, did he voluntarily leave as a free agent to join the Cowboys? Yeah. He played one year for the Niners for like a million bucks, and then he signed with Dallas for mega bucks. Right. And what happens during NFL free agency? What season is that? That's baseball season. And he was on the Giants when he did that. And he came to the plate the very next night. Again, I was there. Deion Sanders came to the plate as a Giant the day after signing with the Dallas Cowboys and got booed while still in a Giants uniform. Is that that accurate? Unless my mind is betraying me, which is possible. This is a lot of years ago. (laughs) I don't think that happened. No, no, no. Here's what I'll tell you. I don't know if it was overnight. He was booed as a member of the Giants uh, at Candlestick Park. Because check and see was, if my years add I'll up. I'll have to check that out. Check there's, and see if my years add up. There's a lot of... Or or if he was on the Reds by then, maybe my mind is playing tricks on me. They traded Dion. Yes. And I felt like he went to the Cowboys first. And then they traded him, and I felt to myself, part of the reason they traded him is because the fans didn't like him anymore. 
Because <laughs> he left for the Cowboys. I know. I mean, that would be good enough reason right there. He was a Dion was a giant in ninety five. Okay. Yeah, that's right after the Super Bowl. So he was a giant. Yeah, so they win went. the Super Bowl. They didn't go to NFL free agency. Yeah, he you're leaves right. for the he, Niners to the Cowboys, and he see. was on the Giants. And I then they it, traded him like a month later. And I and you'll never convince me that that wasn't part of the reason why. He was traded by the Reds to the Giants in July of ninety five. So Dion came to the Giants. Okay. Um, wait a second. Traded by the Reds, yeah, to the Giants okay. in July 21st of 95. And that was the same year that he became a Cowboy, right? He became a Cowboy in, um, yeah, probably later that summer, right? There you go. Like maybe, maybe. Uh, I don't know when. I mean, free agency could be any point over the summer. So maybe it was before, so, maybe it was after. So he be, he was traded to the. He was a Niner in the 94 Super Bowl. Right. They win the Super Bowl in January of, of 95. 95. Yep. He gets traded by the Reds to the Giants <laughs> in July of 95. Right. So he was a Giant and then. And then he went to the Cowboys. And then was a Giant until when, though? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. December 20th, they granted him his free agency in 95. Because <laughs> they really liked So he him. played the rest of the year. Played the rest of the year. But they let him walk. They basically, he was a cowboy. Yes. And a giant. Yes. And, and he was a and, niner and, and a giant and, for a while. And Candlestick did not like that. Yeah. They did not like that. 